What's the worst case you've seen of someone trying to play the victim when it was all their own fault? This girl accused a teacher, who had been there for over 40 years, of sexual assault right before her entrance exam. It was a really good private school so you needed to take a test to be considered for admission. The accusations were investigated and were found completely unfounded almost immediately. I don't know what this girl was thinking, like maybe she thought it was a way for her to get some leverage and improve her chances of getting in or something. On top of that, the actions of the school were even worse. They kept him in the dark for two months after the investigation was completed and were refusing to allow him back because of their insurance. Then a campaign was launched by a bunch of alums and he finally got back to teaching, until his death a few years ago. He was a great guy too, I had him for a political theory class and he was really nice. He and his wife, aside from having children of their own, took in foster kids all the time and he did a lot of other volunteer work. Sucks he had to go through all of that because some teenage girl lied, maybe my ex-wife. Pretty standard stuff. As boyfriend and girlfriend we had all kinds of kinky sex. Oral, anal, strap-on, roleplay, etc. I've never really been a huge fan of vanilla sex. Anyway, we get married, and as time goes on, she starts dropping all of the fun activities and only wants pretty basic sex. Nothing wrong with that. Just wasn't what I was into. So our sex life plummeted but I was okay with that. She really wasn't, and eventually wanted an open marriage. I consented. I'll spare the details but she found someone fast, forbid me from sleeping with someone when I finally found them because she wasn't ready for it. And when this all came to a head and we separated, she went around blaming for for forcing her to have sex with someone else. Greater than wanted an open marriage. I consented. Greater than I'll spare the details but she found someone fast they were already fucking and she was trying to make it retroactively okay. My brother, our whole life, has blamed our middle class upbringing for him taking zero responsibility. He's basically a 40 year old version of no one gets me. He spends his money recklessly, has turned down opportunities to advance himself in lieu of making YouTube videos in his shed ranting about how riches keep him down. It's pathetic, greater than Richie's dammit, stop calling me Richie, it's Richard, and will you please get back to work. Cheaters on r slash rant or r slash off midschist. I'm so torn between these two men. Woe is me. Happens repeatedly. One guy victimized himself for catfishing. Claimed it was totally harmless. I believe he was just trying to prove to himself that he isn't a terrible person. Greater than one guy victimized himself for catfishing. Claimed it was totally harmless. What happened? During a Sunday liturgy, I gave the priest the proper intonation for the Gloria in Excelsis, but he started chanting the Sanctus instead, which comes much later in the Mass. No one knew how, or if, to respond, so the place fell silent. Afterward, the priest blamed me, the organist, for giving him the wrong intonation instead of simply admitting that he wasn't infallible and had made a simple mistake. Username checks out. This girl at my work is not proactive at all. Always refusing to cooperate, always saying she's too busy already. Me and my colleagues always agree to complete the extra tasks and to do it as fast as possible. There are four people at my sector, when the bosses show clear enough that they prefer me and my friends instead of this girl she will start to say that they are misogynists and racists causes she is not white enough. I mean, what the hell, she is just a bitch and can't realize it. My cat plays with the closet door and sometimes shuts himself in. Then I get an angry cat yowling to get let out and acts like I'm the one that locked him in there or just cats that want to leave the room right after they enter. I open the door and he just looks at me and meows. Usually he just wants to get picked up and snuggled. But I can only do that for so long. He probably also just wants food, cats are just need food scream machines. I ain't trying to make a chonker over here though, they do that not because they want to go in the room, but because it's part of them patrolling their territory to make sure no other cats are trying to take their territory. They just want to make sure there's no invaders in that room. 
Facebook drama from a few years ago. This girl was leaving a bar drunk, and she backed her car into the car of someone she was an acquaintance with while exiting the parking lot, then the next day went off on him for telling the police he saw her do it, when he knew she was poor and could have just said he didn't see it and had his insurance pay. She kept digging a deeper hole and all the replies were like bitch, don't drive drunk, it was glorious. Insurance would pay for it either way. But this way her premium goes up, not his. If he reported it as he didn't see who did it, it would show as an at-fault accident on his driving history. If in the US. Well, she probably had to pay her deductible, and judging from her attitude probably set it real high. Local business owner slash friend asked a lot of his regular customers to invest in his new business in Atlanta, by buying shares. I bought in, knowing we wouldn't break even for at least three years, but that he could sell religion to the Pope. Had losses for two years, break even at three as predicted. Four years in, he closes the Atlanta store and opens in another town, but this time he's doing it all with his own money. Bullshit, he's doing it with the inventory and proceeds from the Atlanta store. Even has a shiny new house, cars, the works for his new venture. He's shocked to the core, and hurt, I tell you, hurt and disappointed. When all the shareholders took him to court. Did it get settled? Wow. My best friend's ex-girlfriend. Basically her ex was kicked out of her parents' house when she told them she was a lesbian. She moved in with my best friend since they were dating at the time. At first she told my GF that she was too depressed to find a job. My best friend was okay with that even if it meant she'd have to work more, which she did. She even found a second part-time job. For the next six months, whenever my best friend asked her if she found a job she'd always get the I'm too depressed response. Eventually my best friend finds out her girlfriend cheated on her. Her excuse for cheating was you're always at work and never have time for me. I need someone who will be there for me. My best friend kicks her out and then her ex blames her for having to move back in with her parents. The kicker, turns out her parents never really kicked her out, she was just tired of them telling her to get a job. Wow. Real piece of work, that one. Yeah, and because of persons like her, people that are actually depressed get shit on because they're lazy. Indeed, a real piece of work. My ex cheated on me and I left him. He said he cheated because he felt like he couldn't please me in bed and it made him insecure man. Lamau. I had a similar one. An ex said he was so sure I would leave him unless he did xyz thing he thought I wanted. He never bothered to discuss this like, you know, an adult should. Meanwhile he put himself under such intense strain he finally snapped, had an affair and ended the relationship. He is normally a smart man, but would not budge when I was laying it out. Okay. So you were afraid I would leave you, black tick mark, so you did a bunch of stuff you did not want to do to keep me happy, black tick mark, you never bothered to find out from me if I wanted you to do these things or not, black tick mark, so now I was the one who put you through so much stress you had to have sex with a girl half your age and end the relationship, black tick mark, so you were ultimately so afraid of losing the relationship you choose to end it in a shitty way, No that wasn't it at all. LOL. Not the worst case I've had experience with, but when I kicked my abusive ex out of my house, he started playing the homeless victim card bad. Understand, when I kicked him out, it had been 10 months after we broke up, he strong armed me into letting him live with me when I got a better place and he got kicked out of his friend's house. I was the only one working, he refused to watch our child while I was at work. He would get aggressive and violent if I even talked to another guy, and there were multiple cases of my best friend and only ally would have to basically kidnap me to get me away from him and keep me safe. Yeah, it was all just a fucked up mess, but he started telling everyone I was this crazy horrible person, how I kept him from seeing our daughter, and how I was being a bitch because I was jealous. For years afterwards, everyone believed him, and I lost every friend I had. Thankfully, this story got a happy ending. It's been years since this happened, and now I'm in a healthy, 
happy, and safe environment, I met and married an amazing human being who held my hand and had my back when I started going to therapy to heal the wounds that were left and is the father of my youngest, my daughter is now 9 and is an amazingly sweet and strong girl, and I have an amazing group of friends who are the best support team no could ask for. The first few words worry me. Also, did you gain your friends back? Is your ex an involved father at least now? Yeah, the worst case involved someone under the influence of drugs, a car crash, and children. Sadly, most of my old friends were pushed so far away by my ex, that even though they understand and know it wasn't my fault, the damage was done. They moved on, which is 100% understandable, and I'm still really proud of the amazing lives they are living. I do have two friends who I still talk to and consider part of my family, one of them being the one who helped me out during the worst times. As for my ex, he kinda is involved, but not as much as my husband. My daughter sees him every other weekend, sometimes one weekend a month, usually depends on whether she wants to go or not. I have full custody, and he doesn't pay child support, plus he's not on the birth certificate, so there's no actual mandatory visitation or anything. As for his toxic traits, he went and got help, went to classes and therapy, and does have his temper under control, which is the only reason I let him see her. Sounds bitchy, I know, but I absolutely refuse to put my child in a situation like I was stuck in. Juicy Smoolit. The famous French actor? My ex GF tried to get me arrested for assault and rape. Turns out, it was her boyfriend that she cheated on me with who did it to her. She wanted money so she blamed me. This pisses me off. I was actually assaulted and women like her make it so much harder to get belief. Those that lie are the ones doing the silencing. I stayed quiet for a long time because nobody could believe me while the Me Too movement was inspiring liars. I'm an actual part of that movement now, but those liars never were, they were perceived to be by onlookers. This guy got upset saying we were always talking about him behind his back. He would creep up to the door in our apartment and stand there listening to our conversations. Of course we would talk about him. He owed two of us over $600 and refused to pay it. And then we were the bad people because we would talk about it, in our own apartment, not knowing he is creeping around the door. Yeesh, that is creepy AF. I quit my job and set up my own competitive business with my ex-employer after he failed to pay me for two months claiming non-payment from the clients. He had a massive go at me after I confronted him with receipts from the clients to show payments and he accused me of making him look bad in front of his clients and that he didn't owe me the money because some people are bosses and some people are employees hence why I quit the job and set up for myself because last time I checked, slavery is illegal in the UK. I also warned a few of my ex-co-workers to be careful and not let him rack up debt with them because of what he did to me. They are nice people with young families and don't deserve to be taken advantage of, like he did to me. I take him to court to try to recoup the money he owed me for the work I completed and the judge ruled in my favor for the full amount of just over £4,000. He then plays the victim card with everyone he knows and says that I made him and his family homeless despite the fact that he never paid me a penny of the money owed. £4,000 is like 5 to 6 months rent in a decent neighborhood in my city. Honestly blows my mind every time I think about it. Short story, the dude stole over £4,000 from me, never pays me back, blames me for making his family homeless. You have a court order for the money, and he still hasn't paid. Sounds like you need to head back to the court. Getting a civil judgment and collecting on that judgment are two completely different things, unfortunately. My ex-husband got arrested for having child porn. He blamed me, saying it was my fault he was so depressed he went looking for it. Edit, I did not expect this comment to get so much attention. Thank you for the supportive comments. Some follow-up, his depression defense worked, he was given 8 months house arrest, no jail time. Fast forward several years to now, he is sitting in jail awaiting trial, charged with first degree sexual abuse of a minor. Jesus pistol whipping Christ. That's a new one. I lost a lot of weight, 
150 pounds, my overweight friend didn't. I don't care, she's my friend, I love her. I tried on a pair of size 12, size 8 US, jeans but they were too big so asked for the smaller size. Before I could try them on my friend stormed out of the shop and when I followed her she screamed at me for rubbing my weight loss in her face. I lost the weight in 2015, I've been this size for 4 years. What did she want you to do? Buy pants that don't fit, wasting your money, to spare her feelings? What she really wants are ops results without ops effort. An older lady walked into a construction area where she knew she wasn't supposed to go just to snoop around when the workers weren't there and then sued because she slipped on a plastic floor covering. She worked there. She knew the area was off limits. Did it anyway. How did the lawsuit turn out? Settled. My friend's sister. She doesn't feed her kids nor send the oldest one, seven, to school. Her neighbors reported her to CPS, and now she's posting statuses about how cruel people are for separating a mother and her kids. What do you mean she wasn't feeding her kids? How were they getting by? Not up, but my so is a teacher in an inner city school. The school gives out free breakfast and lunch, or else many kids wouldn't eat anything, she literally has many kids that only eat in school. It's a combination of poverty, drugs, lack of education, crime, etc. So yes, there are people who don't feed their giver. A woman rear-ended my car in the car wash of all places. She failed to put her car in neutral and rolled right into me. She then proceed to yell at me and insist that it was my fault for not going fast enough. After we finally convinced her that the track always goes the same speed, she decided to blame the car wash employee for making the track too slow. Guy breaking up with me to be with another girl then expecting me to sympathize with his hurt, no? You spat me out like gum, I'm calling you out, don't claim you don't deserve it. I don't talk to him anymore edit I should mention, he tried to get my current boyfriend to break up with me by saying I was an emotional water balloon as well as pointing out my weight. The girl he left me for is just as heavy as me, ha ha. This one girl I really liked told me she wasn't interested soon after the first date, then soon after she would walk by the lockers at a specific time when she knew I would be there, hoping, as a mutual friend told me, that I would ask her why she wasn't interested. Then she got super pissed at me and was giving me the silent treatment when I didn't ask. I found out way later that it was because she'd started dating a friend of mine. And somehow that was all my fault. Like, I'm sorry I'm not asking you why you want to date my friend more than me, that must be really hard. When I was teaching, I had a student I adored who had some behavior problems. I did everything I could to support him. One day, we were taking a test and he was talking. I reminded him several times that talking during a test is not allowed, and I would have him go in the hallway if he continued. He continued talking, so I told him to go into the hall. He called me autistic on his way out, his favorite insult, and so I wrote him a referral. I called his parents and they didn't answer, so I sent an email explaining what happened, that he got a referral, and that I hope we can work together to help him manage his reactions. His mother responded saying that my behavior is unacceptable and that she is done speaking with me and I will hear from her lawyer. She went all the way up to the district level to complain about me, telling all sorts of lies and making me look like a horrible person. I don't teach anymore, goddamn. A lot of police departments are now wearing body cams for accountability purposes, but it sounds like teachers are the next profession that ought to be wearing them for their own protection. Having an objective recording of what did, or didn't, happen sounds like it would be a blessing. I wonder how quickly a teacher with a terrible student would get fired if they presented video evidence from their classroom showing the kids storming out and calling the teacher autistic. Greater than you recorded my child. How dare you, every incel. You don't want to fuck me at no reward for you? Poor. Many other examples as well, but we all get the point. Incel, underscore, you're so pretty you woo you backslash underscore girl, oh thanks incel, why don't you come over for dinner sometime? Macron cubed Macron, girl, I have a boyfriend, but thanks anyway.
insult, you ugly whore no one would want you with your rotten cellulite and associates degree you aren't worth my time anyway I will literally kill you girl, hits block button, wipes phone, enters witness protection. Sometimes my children ask me why they've met my mother but never met my father, I tell them he died a long time ago when I was a kid. In reality, my dad used to be an abusive drunk, and my mother had to kick him out because he used to beat on us kids. We used to spend weekends at his new house but around the time I turned 10 he told my mother to stop dropping us off, and gave her a shoebox full of all the pictures he had of us. We tried calling him on holidays every now and again, but he finally just told us to stop contacting him altogether. Last year my mother passed away, and he decided to reach out to me and expressed he had changed and wanted to make things up to me. I told him it was okay, I filled him in on how I was doing in life and sent him pictures of my children, but I expressed I was already a man, and don't need a father anymore, but he was forgiven for the 20 year absence. He then proceeded to tell me that I'm horrible for pushing him away and abandoning him, that he was dying and just wanted to fix things. So I just explained to him, it's already forgiven but he abandoned me and I had no time for his foolishness. I wish things would have been different, but he's too much of a bad influence to allow in my children's lives. You're a good parent and good person for being firm with him. Does anyone think that the story of Brock Turner might fit in well to this category? Oh, you mean Stamford rapist Brock Turner? Abso fucking lootly. Yes, that's the one, Brock the Stamford rapist Turner, exactly. My ex-wife loves to do this. She had an affair, left me and our kid for the guy, got a DWI and the car I co-signed for was repossessed. Every time I hear from her I get to listen to her complain about how she has to walk to work and how she has to borrow lunch money because child support took $129 out of her check and your son never calls her and she hasn't seen him in over a year. Bitch. Shut. The. Fuck. Up. Edit, wasn't expecting such a huge response. Without further ado, I present the abridged version of the backstory. https colon slash slash www.reddit.com slash r slash surviving infidelity slash comments slash bggbcp slash turns underscore out underscore liars underscore don't underscore always underscore lie underscore about underscore affairs underscore im slash l's cops. Utm underscore source equals share and utm underscore medium equals web 2x. The three rules to understanding my ex-wife, 1. She always gets what she wants. 2. When she doesn't, she loves to play the martyr. 3. All of her past, present, and future problems are due to her ex-husband, me. My crazy college girlfriend cheated on me and then blamed me for causing problems in our relationship by being obsessed with the truth as I figured out what had happened. Better to be obsessed with the truth than with a lie. I cannot believe you. She cried with dismay, I gave you my love and you threw it away. I gave you my heart and my beauty and youth. And what did I get but obsession with truth? There's only a singular thought in your head, and that's why we can't be together, she said. I sighed in the silence and spoke to her slow, or maybe, just maybe, it's cause you a hoe. I was in a crowded parking lot, driving around looking for a space. There was one car ahead of me. The car ahead of me stopped, so I stopped as well. I'm not sure why she stopped because there were no empty spaces and no one was pulling out, but whatever. Then, before I even had time to react, her reverse lights came on and she came flying backwards towards me. I didn't even have time to honk. She slammed into the front of my car, got out of her car, and started screaming that I hit her. When officers arrived, she was crying and shaking and complaining that her neck hurt and cursing me for slamming into the back of her car. Thankfully, two people had been walking through the parking lot when this occurred and told the officer what really happened. Later, the driver of the car that hit me, tried to tell her insurance company that I knew the witnesses and that's why they lied. I didn't know the witnesses by the way. At any rate, if the witnesses hadn't stuck around to give statements, I'd have been screwed. So I should probably put a dash cam on my car for my safety? 
I'm fairly certain this is karma, but I've had no incidents since I've been using a dash cam. When I didn't have a dash cam it felt like people were trying to scam me every week. My sister's friend was beaten up by her boyfriend and stayed the night downstairs of our house with her three kids. Next day he comes around starts cursing her out saying she stole his kids. Grabs the baby and start walking away with him. She chases him trying to get the baby back and he punches her several times in the face. My brother intervenes and separated them. This asshole leaves and brings back the cops to arrest my brother for assault. What happened after? Is she safe? What about the children?